Of all the stories that appear about you, I would guess about 90% are near enough untrue. Here's a chance to put a few things straight. You ready? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> have you or have you not ever had a boob job? Not. Really? Absolutely not. <laughs> And it's not, it's not one of those things that I frown upon or I judge anybody for. If it's something I had done, it's something I'd be quite willing to say I had it done. It's not like a top secret. It's not like I would be the only person that ever had it done. I just haven't had it done. Are you, are you quite flattered that everyone thinks you have? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's the one room I quite like. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had a nose job? Nose job? Wow. Never even heard that one. Clearly not by, by the little <laughs> conk I have here. I was going to say, get your money back. They call... <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's they... allowed an imperfection. No, Yours is your hooter. They call... Exactly. <laughs> I quite like the little ridge. And it, I like they call, it. They call it the Tweedy Snack. A Tweedy Snack? Yes. I've, a got snack a, I've got a Tweedy nose. A Tweedy Snack? Yeah. So you'll never get it fixed, you don't think? Are you suggesting I need to? No. <laughs> There's been a suggestion that you already have. I'm just throwing it out there as a possibility. Wow. Absolutely. You're happy with your Tweedy snack? I'm happy with me. My, my cousin once said to me, and this was before I even knew I had the Tweedy snack, um, <laughs> I love the fact that you just, you just go on and you've got the Tweedy snack and the bump in your nose it makes me feel more comfortable about mine. <laughs> And I didn't even know before. See, the, we the weird thing for me is, when you've been frowning, and you have been frowning at me quite a lot so far, <laughs> it actually seems to move. I'm quite surprised by that as well. <laughs> so... I, I work on Britain's Got Talent with botox fueled people. So, you know, when I turn to my left, it's just... <laughs> but to see a judge in front of me where it actually moves is quite surprising. You don't even do Botox. I'm only 27. So, but I'm quite impressed. I'm, I'm, I'm saluting you, really. Um, I'm actually... I would be terrified. Again, it's not... I'm not, I'm not judgmental of anybody that does it, else I wouldn't be sat next to Simon. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just not, it's just not something I... It's just not something I choose to do or feel like I need to right now at, the moment, at this moment. Ask us in ten years, maybe we'll be talking like this. I mean, do, you have anything, do you have anything against plastic surgery? Is it you? No, I don't. Could you imagine going under the knife in, in ten, ten years' I'm time? Just for, I mean, in ten years' time, who knows? I wouldn't imagine a lot of things that have happened in the past ten years I've had you have asked us back then. So I would never say never, ever in this life, never say never. But, um... It's just not something I feel the need to do. Did you, uh, according to the sun, become dangerously thin and live on a diet of mint tea? No. I don't think you can, can you? I've no idea. Never tried it, but people have suggested I ought Maybe to. Maybe you but... should try. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, say, we'll, we'll say the outcome may be that you can't survive. <laughs> Cheryl? I'm joking. I'm messing. Must angel. I'm messing. Did you buy a £35,000 wind tunnel to keep fit so wow. that you could be as thin as Danny Minogue. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Is it true? Uh, does it exist? Do you keep fit in a wind tunnel? A wind tunnel? <laughs> Is that a serious question? Yes. Do you ever get into one? I've seen one of these things. You get in them and then you get blown away by turrets of wind. <laughs> no. Absolutely never heard of it. Do you ever diet or not? I'm always, like, aware of what I eat. And I have days where I just want to eat what I want to eat, especially as a woman, you have those days. And then I'm, and then I'm one of those people that'll have burger and chips and then for the whole of the rest of the day go, wish I'd never eat those burger and chips. <laughs> wish I'd never eat those burger... Why did I eat those burger and chips? While I'm eating a packet of crisps. <laughs> <laughs> You've had a very traumatic year, everybody knows that, for a number of reasons. And everyone's been giving lots of attention to your health. How are you actually feeling physically right now? It's actually been just over the 12 weeks, so all my blo blood is new and I feel great. <laughs> Are you back to 
your fighting best, do you think? Are you feeling 100%? I'm probably feeling 95, and I, and I don't think for a long time I felt 100, so I'm definitely on my way. People knew that you were sick. Then came the stories about malaria, but no one has ever really worked out the truth about this. Right. Now we're going to get the chance. In July this year, Cheryl took time out from her busy schedule and jetted off for a holiday in Africa with her close friend Derek Hoff. Cheryl and I um, decided to go to Tanzania on holiday. It was a fantastic time. We got a few little mosquito bites here and there, but we had taken the tablets and we thought, you know, everything would be okay. Two weeks later, Cheryl was at the X Factor auditions in Cardiff when she began to feel ill. We genuinely thought she had a hangover on the day. Um, that's what somebody told us, so we were teasing her all day long. Uh, and we didn't think anything about it till the following day when I get a phone call to say that she's collapsed on a photo shoot. When I arrived at the photo session, I could tell she was so weak, she was grey, and for some strange reason, I thought her face looked a bit puffy. Cheryl was sent home to rest and a doctor was called. Right before the doctor left, I just kind of had this kind of overwhelming feeling of she needs to get her blood, you know, checked. He didn't know it yet, but Derek's quick thinking may have saved Cheryl's life. The careering of the blood and the alerting of the hospital and the prompt response by the medical team, I think, really was essential. The doctor said, you know, she needs to come in right now. Cheryl was in serious trouble and was rushed to intensive care. Her body had swelled so much. I couldn't see her eyes, they were just like slits. It was a different person. Tests confirmed doctors' worst fears. Cheryl had malaria. There are four types. She had the worst one, and it's a dangerous, life-threatening type of malaria. The kidneys weren't working. The lungs were filled with fluid. There was parasites all over in her blood. Cheryl was told that the next 36 hours would be make or break for her. She was deteriorating all the time. Her breathing was much worse as, as time went by, and we thought it was only fair to let everyone know just how seriously ill she was. I remember Cheryl saying, you know, am I going to die? And I remember the doctor coming up to her and saying, um, there's a possibility. I don't know how somebody copes with the fact they might die. I suppose the obvious question is, when the doctor said that to you, that there was a possibility you might die, I mean, what was going through your mind? I was just so weak and sick. I was actually thinking, if it's going to happen, please just hurry up. I wasn't, I wasn't scared, I was tired, I was exhausted. I'd been sick for a while and I was, I was just, I was just over it, I was over feeling so ill. Did you realise how serious it was? It was actually the um, day after my birthday, I got the first symptoms and I'd obviously, I'd had two, three vodkas the night before, and I never drink. I'm not a drinker. And I just thought, um, this, wow, this really affects me. I woke up in the morning, and um, I was putting my moisturiser on, my skin hurt. My skin was sore. And I thought, wow, this is the worst hangover I've ever had. But not for one second did malaria cross my mind. Not for one Even second. though you'd just been to Africa? Not at all. So you're getting steadily worse. You get to this photo shoot when it gets dramatic suddenly. Talk me through what happened there. Um, again, same thing, got up in the morning, 
my skin was so to touch. My lips were blue. And I was drenched. And I got to the photo shoot and the girl I work with, who knows me more than anybody, said, this is not right. Um, we need to schedule some time off. I think you're exhausted. Then what happened? I really don't want it to be morbid. I really don't want it to be like this. Um, yeah, but I think people are realising, probably for the first time, right. how serious this was. It's, it's only 12 weeks ago. It's, um, it's very raw. Do you remember the moment when you, you collapsed? I'd been really excited to do the photo shoot. It was for Vogue. And um, they'd flown a photographer in from New York and it dropped him at the wrong airport. This is what I remember specifically. And he'd driven three hours to get to the photo shoot. And they were saying to me, go home. And I remember thinking, this poor guy, he's, he's driven. He's had a terrible time getting here, driven all the way here. Let me, I said, just let me lie down for an hour. I'd be okay. And that was it. I was out like a light. I did the photo shoot. And I went home and, and that was the night. That was the night. The key moment of that evening was Derek saying, you've got to have a blood test. And what has become clear from interviewing your doctor is that if he'd not done that, you may well not have survived. So effectively, Derek saved your life. Well, absolutely. Um, and I'm a bit pathetic when it comes to needles. Like, I can't... I can't it has to be a baby, baby one. And, and I was actually really angry with him for suggesting that I get my blood taken. Like... You're making me have a needle. Little did I know, you saved me life. Your mother said in her interview that your organs began to fail. Are you even aware of any of this? I remember actually feeling like I was dying, if that makes any sense. And I just wanted to know the truth, was I? And out of all that, that's what I remember asking. It's a cliche, but does your life flash before you in a moment like that? What are you, what are you thinking? Your family around you? It doesn't seem real. It's very, very surreal. Um, I mean, Mother never showed me our emotion there and then. She was strong. And I think there was a point I said to her, what they laugh about now, you make sure you get someone here tomorrow to write, write my will. <laughs> you said that? Yeah. And, and I remember thinking to myself, my sister can have that. I know it's, it's like now, looking back, it feels very surreal, but at the time, it, was, it seemed like almost matter of fact. Did you feel ready to fight then? I was too tired. I was tired. I was, I, I can't even describe to you, it's not, it's not like you feel. You were completely in a complete breakdown of exhaustion. Exhaustion. And I'd been ill for a few days. There's only so much of that you can take before you start thinking, okay, enough. And I remember as I was getting better, and I, and, and me, the oxygen was open, I was, everything was improving. Thinking to myself, God, I don't know how other people 
with other illnesses can be so sick all the time. And aren't I so lucky that in 10 days' time this is going to be gone for me? But there's people out there that are seriously ill and feel this physically tired and ill most of the time. You owe a lot to Derek. Yeah. I mean, pretty amazing thing that he did. Just his instinct probably saved your life. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a pretty good friend to have. It, that's, uh, he's an amazing, amazing person. And I can, I can never repay him for that. That's me life. What is the truth about you and Derek? I mean, I've seen you together. Mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, thought, a pretty hot couple. I did. <laughs> I, I like him a lot. So do I. He's smart, intelligent, you know, good-looking, well-dressed, yep. great dancer. About your height? I'll tell you, um, <laughs> I'll tell you uh, the one thing that's come from everything I've experienced in the past up to now is that this is the last time I will ever talk about my private, personal life. This is it. This is the last time. I'm not willing to sit here and say, um, he's my boyfriend, he's not my boyfriend. I'm not prepared to deny, admit anything. And I, and I don't have to. People are going to speculate on what I do and what's going on in my life regardless to what I say. So they can, we're very, very close. That's obvious. People can speculate what the hell they like. I, what I liked about him was he's very protective of you and he seemed to make you happy. Regardless of any romantic thing. He, that's the impression I got. Everybody that's, that's in my life, I'm with them because they're great people. And they're all very, very protective and strong and just great people. I, I, I don't want to surround myself with anything else. Next time Derek says, I've got a great idea, let's go on holiday to Gambia. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to say? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't think somebody like you would fall in love and marry a complete idiot. You know, apart from the, the obvious, he never tried his bad. He's not a bad person, just a nice guy.